All right, James chapter 2, starting in verse 17. Even so faith, if it hath not works, it is dead, being alone. The study is on works and the gospel, and yet here he says works and faith must go together. We've spent the past two weeks proving, proving from Scripture that the just are saved by faith, not by the deeds of the law. It's not to him that worketh, but to him that believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. So, why does James say a man is justified by works? He says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So, in other words, if you've got faith that saves, if you've truly been born again, you'll also have works. You will have works. The gospel does not include works. The gospel must be followed by works. That is the way the gospel works and the law intersect. The gospel comes to make us righteous. That's what we saw in Titus. The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. That's the point of the gospel. Verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. A little tongue-in-cheek there. He says, you believe there's one God. Big whoop. The devils also believe that there's one God. They also believe. In fact, when they saw Jesus and the uh, maniac of Gadara, they said, you are the one son of God. You are the sent of the Father. They knew that he was the son of God. So they even had their... their uh, uh, they even were right on the doctrine of the divinity of Christ. They even had the right doctrine. A lot of devils have good doctrine. They are still false converts. They're still tares among wheat. And the Bible says the way we can tell this is by their works. You see a man is justified by works. Verse 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works? Well, actually, Romans says he was justified by faith and not works. So, James, do you contradict Paul? Not at all. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Now, we do believe this is inspired scripture, right? Is he teaching works salvation? No, he's teaching works follow salvation. See, verse 22, Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, there's faith, not works, but faith, pure, unadulterated faith, brings about salvation. Salvation brings about works. You see then, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then, how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Ooh, if I were to have written those words in 21st century English in my book, I guarantee the antinomians would have screamed heresy. This man is adding works to the gospel. James is not adding works to the gospel, and neither am I. This is not adding works to the gospel. This is reestablishing the connection that has been lost in modern evangelicalism between the gospel, and or salvation rather, and works. You cannot separate saving faith from living works. If you are born of God, you will live as your father. All right, verse 25. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. If your faith did not produce a life of good works, your faith is dead. And James could not be any clearer on this, folks. The Bible is clear. This summarizes our study. You cannot add works to the gospel, folks. The only way to be saved is through the righteousness of Christ. We, even our own righteousnesses, are as filthy rags. And yet you cannot separate saving faith, the grace of God that bringeth salvation, from a life of sanctification.